So Anaconda, if you install it, so if you search for Anaconda on your Windows machine, you will see the Anaconda Navigator has the green uh, uh, snake symbol. And you have a, another one called Anaconda Prompt, okay, which is the black screen. We don't want the prompt. We want the green icon, okay? So if you launch that, it will look something like this. You will have this interface, okay? So this Anaconda is not Python. I mean, it's not uh, what we use for Python. Anaconda is a, uh, it's like a, um, a container that can contain a lot of other Python uh, programs. And the, how Python works is that after you start to either go into uh, Python programming, is that you usually uh, develop or run Python program in a virtual space. We call it um, a, a virtual environment so that you are siloed into that environment so that your program does not have to be interfered by other uh, versions of Python or versions of other programs. And this is very, very common in Python programming. So therefore you have the option to run multiple versions of Python on the same machine uh, because of this uh, virtual, virtual uh, space. So Anaconda runs in a virtual space. And this example here, uh, the virtual space that Anaconda uses is called the base or the root here, the base, okay? So if you, if you click on this little drop down, you can see a few of them, or well, only one here, but if you have a couple of them you see here, those are just basically different environment to run Python. And so Anaconda is, is running on its own environment called the base. Now, if I go ahead and click on the, okay, the Anaconda, I think this is the one. Let me, let me just do that real quick. So the Anaconda prompt will look like this. And this is where you do some Python coding and the black screen. Yeah, some people do this because it's fast. You see in the movie, some hackers do a lot of the black screen. That's what they do. It's much faster than using the GUI interface, okay? But you see that again here on the left side, you see the word base here, because we're not inside the Anaconda environment. Okay, so normally you won't see that. Right? Normally you will see something like um, just uh, without, yeah, just like that, the C drive followed by the directory or the user, whatever it is. Okay, so now we're inside the Windows environment, and then Anaconda uses the base. And as you start to program in Python, you will create your own environment. And it will be it will look something kind of like this here. So Anaconda is just a program to contain other Python applications. And what we use in this class is the Spider IDE, which is this one right here. Okay, you see the the launch icon. It just means it's already installed inside Anaconda. These are not installed yet, so you have to install them if you want to use them. But again, here's our Studio if you're into our programming. Okay, so in this case, we're going to launch Spider. And if you're running Spider from the Anaconda Navigator uh, IDE or, or program, then the Spider is actually contained within the Anaconda program environment. It looks like that. And then it will have some kind of messages you might see. It says, you know, version 5.33 is available. This pops up all the time. I don't know. If, if, if you uncheck this, it will still show up anytime. I think it's a bug or something. And you might have a uh, welcome to spider tour. You just dismiss all of these here. So this will be the IDE, the interface. Uh, you can change the, um, the dark background to a different one, the lighter background um, as well. I don't know if this is better or not. And it's, as you can see, it's really tiny, you can see it. But if you, if you hold down your control key and roll your mouse wheel here, you can expand and you know, enlarge this font here as you can see. So I'll do that so it's easier for us to see. And so I'm just going to show you what this interface looks like. Okay, so when you run Anaconda, uh, right, Spider IDE, this is the default layout. It will look very familiar to you uh, if you have used some any type of IDE before. And you can rearrange this any way you like um, by going to the preferences. But for now, we'll leave it as is, okay? So on the, on the left, window or the panel here, you will see the word temp.py. If I happen to delete that, you're going to see something else. We'll say untitled uh, untitled zero uh, dot py and with a star. Okay, with a star, it just means that this file has been altered and has not been saved. Okay, so this IDE, you cannot leave this panel blank. You must have something. It will always generate one for you. If you delete it, it's going to add another one and so forth. 
Okay, so this is where you write your source code. So in that diagram we saw earlier on, your source code lives inside this file. So Python files uh, will always have the .py extension. Okay, and it is just a text file. It just has the .py extension so that the Python interpreter can know that this is a Python file as opposed to a, a, a regular text file. Okay, it needs to know that so that once it determines that, then it knows that, okay, whatever I type inside this file must follow Python syntax, right? So this is the coding uh, window. On the upper right, you will see right below here in between, you have a couple of tabs here. You can add more or remove them uh, and it's set up. But this is the default. You have a help. You have a variable explorer. I'm sure it's a little bit tiny here. Hope you can see. The variable explorer, you will, will, will see that later. What that means is when you create variables, it will save that variable inside the space so you can see what they are, the what data they have, what type of the data it is, and how many what's what's the size of that data. Okay, for your information only. You do not have this interface if you're using the Visual Studio Code uh, or some other uh, simpler tool. And this is why we chose this one because you can see all this information um, as you learn in, in, in Python. The next one here is the plot. You won't be doing this until much later in the course, maybe the last week of class where you get to plot some graphs, or some bar charts and, and things like that. I do with some uh, data analytics stuff, okay? And then the last one here is the files. If the files here points to the default location of, of your program, it's usually in this example here, I'm not sure what it's pointing to, but um, it looks like it points to the user, my user account. But it can, sometimes it may point to your documents folder and it doesn't really matter. You don't have to worry about this one here, but uh, this is where you actually would see all your files in here, okay? <clears throat> so most of the time you'd be spending uh, time using the files and the variable explorer tabs for this upper window. Down here is the console. This is the interactive Python console, the IPython here, that's what it means, the I is for interactive Python, and then um, has a cell number uh, for this particular line. That means that you can actually start writing Python code right here. And it's active, it's live, and whatever you do here will process. And so this interface here has, um, has nothing to do with this source code here, okay? It's completely independent uh, of itself. So whatever you do here does not affect your source code, but whatever you write your source code here will be outputted to the console, okay? So uh, that's that's the the for that interface, kind of similar to like the web page, for example. If I do here, if I go to F12 and the browser window in web development, we have the developer console here, right? So this is the console where I can write JavaScript, and this page here can actually interact with the page here, but it does not affect the actual source code of the page. Okay, so the same idea uh, here as well for this IDE. Okay, so um, if I make it bigger, how do I do that? I think like control. Yeah, if you want to zoom in, zoom out here, you press the control and then control minus for making small and you control shift plus, and then it'll make it big. So you can see how it can enlarge that here. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll make sure I do that so you can see. Okay, so Python. So this is interactive here. You can test your code here on the console before you, you know, write your actual code inside the file. So for example, if I type in one, two, three, that is a Python code, right? Very simple number, one, two, three. Because it's interactive. You see there's an in, there's an out. The in here is referring to the input, uh, and then the out is the output, the result of this statement. So this is a very simple Python uh, code. The one, two, three here is what's called a literal constant or a numeric constant because it's just a number, right? It doesn't do anything, we just write it and it will just automatically output that to the console you can see there. And then it moves on to the next line. Now, if you have used Jupyter Notebook, it will look very similar to the Jupyter Notebook uh, uh, interface as well. Now, when I create a variable, so the rule in Python when you create a variable is that um, you, you must start with a letter, okay? Or I think, or underscore. 
And then uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, next week, we'll talk about variables. But let's have a, 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 call a variable called pet, okay? And I'm gonna assign this pet. So the assignment is the equal sign. So pet is equal to, and let's say if I put here number five, right? So if I hit enter, okay? Here you see in the top, up here, I can't make that large. You see the name pet here. This is the variable name that I created called pet has a type, the type is called int, I-N-T, which stands for integer, okay, and just a whole number, and then has a size of one. I mean, it's about like a, a, a one one byte, or a, integer is a little bit different size. If you look at character, it'll be different. And then the, the actual value that it contains. Okay, so that information here is really helpful when you write code. And so, now, pet exists in memory here. This is in RAM, in memory as you as you go. Um, so if I go down here and type pet, hit enter, you will see that the result of pet is actually the value five, okay? So it, you see that we have five set to pet. Now, what I mentioned earlier that Python is a loosely typed language. So the type for this variable pet is actually an integer type. So in Java, for example, you would, you would have to say uh, int and then pet equals like five or four, right? You have to do that because you have, it's a statically, statically type. It's, it's a uh, um, strongly typed. You must define the type first before you can use it to assign a number. But in Python, you don't have to do that, okay? so. Because initially it says type five. If I go back and put pet again, now if I sign that with a string, a string in a Python, you would wrap it with a pair of either a double quotes or single quotes like this. Inside here, if I put like a, a cat. Okay. Now what happens when I hit enter key? The name will stay the same, the type will change, and the size and the value will change. Okay, so you see that now it changes from initially was an integer type to the string type. Now, str means string, it's a character, and it has a size of three. Three here is a three bytes. Every character is a byte, so three characters, it's got three bytes, and then it has a value cat. So you can see that pad was initially an integer, and then now it changed to a string. So if, I, if you're not careful, if, if I try to do like, oh, initially a pet was five, I thought, and I want to say pet plus two or three, and you get an error, right? That is the danger of Python uh, with these type of languages. So before you can do any operations, you have to determine or you know define or check what pet is. Is it still a number or not? Okay, so just give you a um, an overview of what that is like as you uh, code and, uh, later. So um, that is a little bit about Python. And so instead of doing in the console here, you'll see that most of the time I'll be doing here because we want to process something really, really fast uh, before we do anything else. But if you want to keep your code, then you want to write over here. Okay, so this is a, a file with a start that I mean, has, has not been saved yet. If you don't save it, you might lose the file. So make sure that when you create a file like this, you want to save it. So let's say that I want to save this file first. Um, you can click here or Control S, and it's going to ask you where to save your file. So for this class, I'm going to save it into my uh, documents folder, and I will create one here. Uh, not Python. I will just create one here. Um, call it uh, SB23 Python. So this will be my project folder for the entire course. Okay, I will use this folder here. For SP20 to Python, click on that folder, and then I give it a name for this file. And actually, um, you know what? In here, I will create another subdirectory, and I'll call it, um, you know, Unit One. Okay, so you create Unit One, you create Unit Two, Unit Three inside this folder here, so you can access everything in here. So inside Unit One, I will use this single file called. Um, uh, demo.py, okay? So here's my file. 
has been changed to demo.py. The star is gone. Now it's, it's ready to go. And I can start write code. Okay. So what you see here is automatically generated by this IDE. Uh, these are called uh, just comments. So in Python, you use the pound sign to uh, comment your code. Comment just means you just annotate your code. Uh, you kind of describe what your code does. Uh, I'll be asking you to do that quite a lot, actually, as you go. And then this is also another piece of comment. We'll, we'll look at this later. So a, a couple ways to do that. Um, but the, the common way to do that is using the pound symbol. So when the interpreter comes to your code, it will read every line in your statement here, line by line. If it uh, sees the pound sign, then it knows that this line, entire line, is just a comment. It's not going to compile it. It will just skip that line. And then here is also another way to write comments. It's differently using a pair of three uh, single double quotes or three single quotes like this. It's fine too. Okay, like that. So hi, like that. Okay, that is also another way to comment your code. And you just have to make sure you match the, the, the opening and the closing. Okay, if you don't do that, it's assuming that it, it there's an error. So these are the uh, three ways how you can write comments in your code. Okay. You can choose either one. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you want to write like multiple lines of comments, you can use this approach. This one here, the pound sign can only allow you to write one statement at a time per line. So you can't use like multiple lines. If you go down here, if I type something, right, this is now an error because this line here is a is expected to be a Python syntax because it's not valid. So therefore you see this little red X over here. If you mouse over that, it will tell you it's an undefined variable called hi, okay? So if you want this to be a part of the comment, then you must include that pound sign in front of it. So that again, that's another comment statement. So you can see how tedious can be. You have like a long lines of statements to describe what your program is, you, you, and then would end up with a lot of pound signs like this and then you describe what your program does. As opposed to this, you can go with this approach using the triple quotes here and here, and then you put your comments in here. If either or um, resource intensive, to read, you know, you know, many pounds versus uh, enclosing in quotes, do you matter? Yeah, I, I think it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is a little bit, um, even though this is used as a uh, comment, this is actually a string. Yeah, so it will actually parse by Python, by the way. If you happen to uh, put a, um, like that, right? So it's an error, it's, it's supposed to be a string, but because Python does not allow you to do that, uh, like you would in, in the other languages, so they would use this to write statements. So um, you will see this, this is quite common, but it, it's, not, it's not, not a big, big issue. 